हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर नंबर टू कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एन ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग इज अ प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज मॉडल व्हिच इज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड अराउंड ऑब्जेक्ट्स रादर देन एक्शंस एंड डेटा रादर देन लॉजिक बिफोर ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग अ प्रोग्राम वॉज व्यूड एज अ लॉजिकल प्रोसीजर दैट टेक्स द इनपुट प्रोसेसिस इट एंड प्रोड्यूस द आउटपुट बट इन ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग अ प्रॉब्लम इज व्यूड इन टर्म्स ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स रादर दैन प्रोसीजर द लैंग्वेजेस इन विच द प्रोसीजर वॉज टेकन केयर ऑफ दैट वर नोन एज प्रोसीजर लैंग्वेजेस नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज एनीथिंग दैट हैज सम प्रॉपर्टीज एंड बिहेवियर for example there is an object pen it has three components identity properties and behavior identity refers to the name that identifies an object here its identity is pen properties refers to the features of the object here the pen can be of red color black color and it is made up of plastic and its behavior is the functions which it can perform like here a pen can write so it is its behavior an object can be anything like a person a car or any other identifiable entity the first object oriented programming language was simula java python c++ visual basic dotnet and ruby are the most popular object oriented programming languages today so the python which we are learning it comes under the object oriented programming where the main focus is on objects rather than the procedure of doing doing it one more example we can say like we have student so this is the identity that is the name of the object student it has some properties name age class and weight these all are the properties of a student that is the features then there are some behavior of a particular student like he or she can learn he or she can see he or she can pass or fail the exam so these are the behavior of the object student so we can say an object has some properties and some behavior and it is an identifiable entity now the basic concepts of object oriented programming are objects which we have just learned classes encapsulation abstraction data hiding polymorphism and inheritance let us learn them one by one class a class is a group of objects with some attributes and behavior attributes refers to the properties and in case of class the attributes are the data members and the behavior is represented by the functions here we have a class mobile phone and it consists of different objects like windows android and iphone these three are the types of mobile phones so this is a class and these three are the objects the name of the class is mobile phone it has some data members or the attributes like it can have any data in them it has some model it has any color and it has some price and the behavior of a mobile phone or the function is it can store number or it can have the missed call information so these are the attributes data members and this is the behavior of a mobile phone which we represent in python as functions an instance is called an object or you can say object is the instance of a class a class is defined before the creation of the objects whenever we will start writing the programs of class first the class will be defined and then the object of that class will be created creating a new object is known as instantiation all object have some basic features in this example which is here there is a class mobile phone and it has three objects nokia iphone and samsung in this example nokia samsung and iphone are the instances of the class mobile phone and all these instances are similar as they have basic feature which a mobile phone should have nokia samsung and iphone all these three have all the features which a particular mobile phone should have next we have encapsulation encapsulation refers to the wrapping of data and functions in a single unit
the data members can be accessed only by the member functions which means that our data is safe and nobody else can access it without the permission in python encapsulation is implemented through classes which we will learn in the next chapter we have seen here that the name of the class its properties and behavior or are enclosed under one independent unit called class so class implements encapsulation in python one more example we can take if the parents of any child want to meet the principal of the school they cannot go directly to the office first they need to inform at the reception same is the case with data members of the class they can only be accessed by the functions of that class but not directly next is data hiding as the name suggests hiding it is a feature of hiding the data from the outside world or from other classes to prevent it from accidental or unintentional access in a class for this purpose the data can be made private or public the private data members or the functions cannot be accessed outside the class while public data or functions can be accessed from anywhere about these concepts we will study in detail in the next chapter which is based on classes and before that we will have a practical implementation of how to create functions or how to define functions in python data hiding is achieved by making the members of the class private private data members or functions can be accessed only inside that class but not outside that class next is data abstraction the process of identifying and separating essential features without including the internal details is called abstraction in abstraction the user focuses on what a class does rather than how it does for example when we receive a call we do not know about how the process is going on we do not know how the phone is getting connected we are only concerned about picking the call or cutting it as long as the mobile is working properly we are not concerned about its inner circuitry so we can say encapsulation is a way to implement data abstraction inheritance inheritance is the process of forming a new class the new class is the derived class which is formed from an existing class that is a base class inheritance enforces reusability of the code means the same code can be used again and again without the need to write it again here we have taken again the same example the class is mobile phone nokia samsung and iphone are the types of mobile phones so we can say here iphone is a class in itself as it is a type of mobile phone so we have here mobile phone as a base class and iphone as a derived class here we are taking them as a derived classes iphone has all the features of mobile phone as well as its own features such a relationship between the two classes is known as a kind of relationship so we can say here iphone is a kind of mobile phone we can consider this example as this is a parent and these are the children so they have their own features as well as the features of their parents next is polymorphism poly means many and morph means forms so it is the ability to use an operator or function in various forms it can be achieved in python in two ways first is operator overloading and second is function overloading operator overloading refers when the same operator behaves differently in different situations there we use operator overloading or that can be represented as operator overloading for example we have this plus operator when it is used to add the two integers then it will give the sum of the integers like 4 plus 3 will give the answer as 7 but if we join two strings if we use this operator with two strings good plus y then it will concatenate the strings and give the answer as good y so the same operator gives the different result in different situations which is known as operator overloading next is function overloading when the multiple functions are defined with the same name but with the different arguments of same or different data type or different number 
then function overloading comes into phase for example we have created here a function test and there are no parameters inside this one and we give print hello here there will be a tab after means a space will be given similarly here and similarly here so print hello and then we say this is function one then we say def test and parameters we have given here a and b and in this we have given 10 20 30 so return a plus b plus c here in place of 10 20 30 we can write a comma b comma c and then only it will return a plus b plus c so if we find the output of this one if we call this function so this is the definition of the three functions function one function two function three if we call this one then this function will be called and it will give the output as hello if we give two arguments here 20 30 so this function will be called and it will return a plus b that is 50 but the function called will depend upon the data type and the number of arguments and python does not support function overloading unlike in java c and c++ the example which we have seen it does not support function overloading if the same function is written twice in python it will override the first one and second will override the third one suppose if you write test 2020 so we can say this time function 2 should be called but we have here three functions so it will flash an error and it says it takes exactly three arguments so the latest the recent function or the latest function which we have written it will override all the other functions which have the same name so it will flash an error and it will say that it takes exactly three arguments next is the concept of binding it is a process of linking the function call to the function definition the body of the function is executed when the function call is made. The practical example will be shown about creating the function and how to call the function in the next video. So we have here two types of binding. One is the static binding and one is the dynamic binding. Static binding means the linking of function call to the function definition. Function definition is when the function is defined or created and function call is when we call the function to get the output which is done during the compilation of the program that is known as static binding and dynamic binding is the linking of function call to the function definition at the runtime. So the code to be linked with the function call is unknown till it is executed which makes the program more flexible. Next we have is the advantages of object oriented programming. The first advantage is the simplicity. The objects are close to the real world that is by simply looking at the objects we can understand its properties and behavior. Next is modifiability which means changes. The changes need to be made only at one place and they are further propagated themselves in this case with the help of inheritance. Next is extensibility and maintainability. New objects can be created easily or previously created ones can be modified. For example, a new version of iPhone comes in the market so simply a derived class of iPhone for new version can be created there is no need to make changes in the base class. Next is reusability. Objects can be reused in various applications. Inheritance makes it possible to define the subclasses of the objects, thereby reducing the development time and ensuring the accurate coding. And the last advantage is security. Private data or the functions which we have learned in data hiding, they cannot be accessed outside the class, thereby preventing the unauthorized access or the data corruption. So with this, our chapter number 2 is completed. I hope you have understood it. There are some concepts which we, you will learn more with the help of their practical implementation. So that we will learn in the next video. Thank you so much.